you will never understand bureaucracy until you understand that to bureaucrats, the procedure is everything and results are nothing. This is what Thomas Sowell said. Well, SpaceX probably understands that statement best. Indeed, while the battle for the green light for Starship's second flight is tense, the company continues to be caught up in a new battle. The culprit this time is none other than the FAA with its controversial report related to space junk. It's unbelievable that a company with the most contributions to America today like SpaceX has become a victim of bureaucracy right in its own country. Of course, Elon Musk and his entire company will fight to the end to get what they deserve, Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. According to the latest news in the Washington Post, SpaceX is calling on Congress to push the FAA to issue faster launch licenses as consultations with the FAA and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service on the possibility Starship incident was pushed to November, further delaying the second launch attempt. Of course, it won't be the only time Elon's aerospace business has to confront the FAA before Congress. At some point in the future, this will be repeated, but in a different situation. Given that, on October 9, the FAA sent a report to Congress warning that by 2035, falling debris from U.S. licensed constellations in low Earth orbit could injure or kill someone every two years if SpaceX deploys as planned, especially in the context of this company's plans to expand the Starlink network worldwide. SpaceX has launched 5,000 Starlink satellites since 2019, accounting for more than 50% of the total number of satellites in operation. If allowed by the U.S. Federal Communications Commission, the number in the future will increase to 12,000 and even increase to 40,000 if international approval is received. That means Starlink's coverage in space will be extremely large. This is considered a lucrative bait for the FAA report to target. It said that Starlink had to take responsibility for more than 85% of the expected risk to people on the ground and aviation from falling debris within the time frame, of course. In response, in an October 9 letter to the FAA and Congress, SpaceX principal engineer David Goldstein said, the report relied on deeply flawed analysis based on assumptions, guesswork, and outdated studies. Although the agency's risk assessment is theoretical, SpaceX is taking issue with how the FAA's report could mislead Congress about Starlink. As a result, the company called on the Federal Aviation Administration to correct a report to Congress. As tensions escalated, both sides remained resolute in their arguments. It leads to a question who is right and who is wrong. According to astrophysicist and satellite tracker Jonathan McDowell, to date, more than 350 Starlink satellites have deorbited, but there have been no reports of their fragments falling to the ground in history. Goldstein also confirmed that Starlink itself is designed to completely burn up in our planet's atmosphere once they've been set to retire. More importantly, SpaceX's principal engineer pointed out some ambiguities in the FAA's report. First, the FAA analysis is considered just based on a 23-year-old NASA study that found roughly one piece of debris survives re-entry for every 100 kilograms on Iridium Communications satellites, a much smaller LEO constellation. Iridium satellites are different from Starlink, not even built to be fully demisable, and not similar in material, construction, design, orbit, and operation from SpaceX or any other modern satellite in LEO. Second, SpaceX said that the non-profit aerospace corporation that helped the FAA assess the risks of large satellites used a flawed methodology and old information from NASA to make its assessment. The nonprofit also apparently never reached out to SpaceX for more information about its satellites. Third, it seems unfair that the national agency seems to be aiming primarily at SpaceX without considering Amazon's plans to launch a large satellite constellation next year. Last, but not least, the FAA's conclusion is based on a claim that the space industry has not met the 90% success rate for post-mission disposal. In fact, for SpaceX, the rate is greater than 99%. However, that does not mean that the whole FAA report is unfounded. In addition to the risk from Starlink's debris, 
It also highlighted the increasing risk of falling debris from the rise in launches needed to deploy and sustain large LEO constellations. If a rocket hits any trouble in space, it will pose a greater re-entry risk to people on the ground. The U.S. commercial rockets that launch large constellations typically leave their upper stage in orbit and usually have more mass than individual satellites. Whereas 60 Starlink first-generation satellites have a total mass of just over 17 tons, an upper stage of the Falcon 9 that launched them to LEO is over 25 tons. The report pointed to the re-entry of a Falcon 9 upper stage in March 2021, following a Starlink launch that could have landed anywhere from 53 degrees south to 53 degrees north latitude. In short, when it comes to the issue of who is right and who is wrong, we can clearly see that SpaceX offers more convincing evidence. However, the conclusion depends on Congress. By the way, no matter who is the one who deserves criticism in this case, the party who is hurt the most is still SpaceX. Once the FAA completed its investigation into the Starship launch on April 20, we could have seen the most wanted material for the next flight at the end of October. However, the more you hope, the easier it is to be disappointed, and the involvement of the Fish and Wildlife Service later proved that saying to be true in this case. Indeed, the FWS has been too slow to conduct its review and assessment of Starship's recent upgrades, which could push the rocket schedule back to next year as well as stifle NASA's ability to return astronauts to the moon. And the fact that FWSE's consultation appears to last until November will make everything more serious. This time, it's the FAA's turn with strange bases in its report. I don't know what you're thinking about it. To me, that seems like the knockout blow this national agency gave SpaceX after the FWS intended to gift Elon Musk a 135-day resort voucher between two Starship test flights. Anyway, I still put a lot of faith in Elon Musk. He has a genius mind and talented companions like Gwyn Shotwell to solve all problems. More notably, SpaceX is increasingly showing its determination to push the FAA to issue launch licenses faster. SpaceX CEO William Gerstenmaier recently said he intended to represent the whole company to speak out his desire in an upcoming Senate hearing, where intends to urge Congress to streamline regulations and increase the number of Federal Aviation Administration staffers devoted to issuing space launch licenses. To be honest, SpaceX worked for two years to get the first Starship launch license and has been trying its best to meet the legal requirements to get a second license. It is unfair for a business responsible for important national projects to become a victim of government bureaucracy. This not only affects the business itself, but also slows down the entire development process of the U.S. aerospace industry. Remember that China is still moving very fast in the space race with the goal of sending a man to the moon before 2030. Meanwhile, America continues to waste a lot of time on meaningless things. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.